Now, Africa's legendary storyteller, Dr. Dinam Slobe, will be uh, keeping children educationally entertained for 10 days during the COVID-19 lockdown with a daily five-minute online story. Uh, to tell us more about uh, this exciting venture, we're now joined via Skype uh, 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 by uh, her heritage, the Heritage Trust Executive Director, Gina Dinam Slobe. Thanks so much indeed for joining us and uh, welcome to the program. Um, so you are a renowned storyteller already, and I suppose this is just a natural extension of your work. Gabong, Gabong, and you're this amazing man on that television, <laughs> that journalist, and my brother too. It's good to see you. Yes, it is an extension indeed. Whatever special area of specialization we have, we should use it to raise awareness and also uh, as a person who thoroughly enjoys working with young people, I hope being able to partner with Mancosa um, um, School of Education, with the Namastigo Art and Heritage Trust, we can bring some relief to the young people's uh, lives during this uh, difficult time of uh, COVID-19 by sharing stories every day at 10 a.m. So what stories are our children likely to hear from you? Some of the stories that uh, I have chosen, I've chosen stories like uh, Jablani and the Lion. They know that story. I've enjoyed it, telling it quite a number of times. I, I will be telling also stories about um, greed, stories about jealousy, stories about uh, finding help where you least expect it, and also fun stories about um, young people playing games and teasing one another and learning that they can also grow from um, the differences and people seeing things the same way again. I think it's important at, at a time like this to know that we are not alike, but um, the differences are the things that make us unique and special. And uh, what languages will you be telling these stories in? In this case, I'm only telling the stories in English, yeah. but uh, I will um, be moving. Um, uh, once we've done this, uh, this, this uh, 10 days, I'll be telling more stories in different languages, hopefully in Isizuru as well. And so that, that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to be doing some stories on our Facebook page on the Namasigo's uh, platform. But for now, it is our partnership with uh, Mancosta School of Education that we are just focusing on at the moment. And there is such a power to sitting around and uh, listening to stories being told. I mean, this is kind of our culture and our history. And uh, it, it's, it's uh, quite a poignant thing that at a difficult time such as this, we revert to that which we are. I think um, this um, COVID-19, it is both scary, uh, at the same time forces us to be still, to be at home, to be the, with the people that we love. And sometimes there are things we haven't talked about. Sometimes we haven't cooked a meal together for a long time because we're busy jet setting. There's no aeroplane to stay. Now you can't be catching a flight this week or next week or the other week. And um, we won't be performing in Vancouver. I won't be performing in a, maybe in, in, in Tokyo or in Nairobi. I'll be here at this house every day, listening to the rules of, uh, of, of the lockdown and making sure that we're washing hands, making sure that we are leading by example. When you are in a position of, um, or when you're in a place of visibility, you need to lead by example, mm -hmm. because you don't know who's learning from you even when you don't even know that people are looking. So it's extremely important then that um, people like us, we've got to really make sure that we listen to the rules, we don't break the rules. And also when we are telling stories, we're making sure that children, no matter how, how much they, they might be missing because they are not going to school, and sometimes they feel like, hey, the days are so long. Yes, the days are long for both young and for the old. I find that many older people, they say, I told the children to sit down, to listen to the stories. I wonder if I didn't enjoy the story more <laughs> than they did. Mm -hmm. So there's always that in a child in the hearing of a good story. So one tries to connect with the audience out there. And stories are a universal yeah. message. I wear the stories of my people like this awesome blanket. It is the power that keeps me going. What sort of ages of children are you uh, trying to target uh, with this uh, endeavor? 
we have been looking at um, three to, to 12 years old, that age group. And as I'm saying, there's a lot of older people who yeah. can't wait for the time to tune in and listen. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, the young people and families. And so that, for me, it gives me great pleasure. And I think uh, Mancosa is very pleased to see so many older people also responding because the children are at home with their parents. And um, the children are not the ones who, who go out to find the data or have got the, the Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And so we know that a, a certain number of people are going to be reached by these stories, but there are people who won't be able to, to receive the stories. Hopefully, they'll be able to connect and be part on the whole day. They start at 10 o'clock in the morning, but you can always uh, uh, log in later on. And I'm glad about that. And I hope that uh, parents will also model you and uh, pick up this culture again of uh, telling their children's stories. You got that right. You got that right. <laughs> Every living being has got a story to tell. Mm. And I'm hoping that this time is going to make parents remember certain stories that they wouldn't have even the time to listen to, 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 to the inner voice saying, you know what, I remember a story like that. You know, one of the most asked questions in South Africa and in other countries, so why do you tell stories? The answer is always the same. I promise you next year and the year after, I'll give you the same answer. I tell stories <laughs> in order to wake up stories in other people. When those stories are awoken, even by this five-minute story, the parents, the, the, the aunts, the, the uncles, the grandfathers, they will remember stories and share with the families during this lockdown time. And I'm hoping that you can lift up people's spirits and for us to know that we are a unique and amazing people. You know, there is a Zulu saying, I don't know if you've heard this, mm. even when the cock doesn't crow, dawn will break. I'm all about hope. All right. So my beloved sister, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. And we wish you the best of uh, uh, luck uh, in uh, this uh, days that you'll be sharing with our children and uh, our older children like me who will be listening intently. Yes. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Uh, Thank you, my brother. And be safe <laughs> and God bless you. Thank you. We hope that South Africa will go through this time. Thank you so much. That's uh, Dr. Grinam Shope, who is uh, with the uh, Grinamasiko Arts and uh, Heritage Trust, the uh, executive director there. She'll be uh, telling stories in the way that she does. And you don't want to miss this. If you've never seen her do it, you, this is an experience that you really, really want to participate on. That's every single day at 10 o'clock. Uh, log on and uh, listen to her online.